fight of the evening to be followed over three three minute rounds and amateur mixed martial arts rules in the bantamweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he enters the cage with a mixed martial arts record of one victory, no defeats. Representing Frank's gym, please welcome Daniel Maxima. And his opponent, standing across the cage, fighting out of the red corner, enters with a mixed martial arts record of one victory, no defeats. Representing next generation Liverpool, Chris Whitehead. Our referee in charge of the action, Mr. Dean Whitehead. Here we go, Brad, a bantamweight competition fought under the unified amateur rules. Fighting out of the blue corner, Daniel Maximus in the white trunks, taking on next gen's Chris Whitehead. Both these guys, this is their second foray into the amateur cage. Looking to keep those records perfect to Daniel Maximus and Chris Whitehead. Maximus looking to let those hands go. Whitehead clinches up here. Got a good body lock and trip outside trim to the ground and I think he's straight into half half guard there so nice position to be in top powerful corner team there for Chris Whitehead Paddy Pimblett Paul Rimmer Ellis Hampson couldn't really pick three better guys to give you advice as far as groundwork goes in MMA absolutely not and he's working hard now he's popped that leg out into the side control route one jiu-jitsu here passes the guard steps over into full mount looking to posture up Maximus trying to get those hips working now, yeah, he's locking down the hips as well. It's really good work here coming out of uh, Whitehead. Here, yeah, Paddy Pimblett in the corner there, just asking his man to push away, create some space, get some leverage on those shots. Plenty of options from this full mount position for Chris Whitehead. It slides the knees up under the shoulders, really securing that mounted position. Got the seatbelt on there briefly. Great positional top control here from Chris Whitehead. Mm. Maximus working real hard, bucking, trying to sort of try and get into a, a more advantageous position. But that ground and pound is fierce. Yeah, shot hammer fist there from Whitehead. Looking to do work from this top position. Three three-minute rounds. So definitely putting points on the board is Whitehead at this point. Without question. And showing a lot, again, for a second fight, showing a lot of patience and composure, not rushing the position, waiting until he finds that posture, then he lands the meaningful blows. Uh, we could be on our way to a 10-8 round here. In terms yeah, of very very possibly, Steve. Obviously, the 10-8's being given out a lot more liberally with the, uh, the new judging criteria. You don't have to... Uh, I, I believe the old term terminology was dominate the round. Yeah. You just have to have a one-sided round, and that's that's exactly what we're seeing. I think you'd you'd maybe find it tough to argue otherwise. Absolutely, and it's not that Maximus is not where he's trying real hard, bucking, trying to make life difficult for Whitehead on top. But Whitehead's top position, he's he's like a blanket. Once he's on, he's staying there. Of course, no elbows under the amateur rule set, but Whitehead doing his best with these short chopping punches. Sorry, I was just looking to see if he had gotten underneath the arm. It was. I mean, he just locks himself down whenever Maximus tries to kind of make. Oh, look! He got it under the chin there, I think. Yeah, Now Max the body lock. Ten seconds left. Can Maximus hold on? He had the, he's got the body triangle in there, but he had yeah. it from the side. Not really as effective. No, it slipped around. But a good, strong first round there from the next-gen prospect, Chris Wrighthead. Maximus, though, second round, all to play for. Absolutely. You know, he, he may have uh, come close to being the architect of his own demise there by, by just bucking too hard, giving the back. Don't want to give your back to a guy from next-gen. Those guys will finish you like that. Training with the likes of Paddy Pimler, Ellis Hampson, Adam Ventre, Chris Fishgold. <laughs> Is there a better bunch of killers to train with in UK MMA at the moment? So certainly in the north of England, arguably not. Certainly, again, it's certainly one of the top, top gyms in the country producing prospects at both amateur and pro levels. Molly McCann as well, training kind of yeah. next gen, so there's some boxing chops going on. And who does not love a meatball? You know Absolutely. what I'm saying? I love a meatball. I love the meatball. Big Molly McCann fan right here. Amen, brother. 
bought that t-shirt many moons ago. Our cage door closes here for our second round. See if Whitehead can be as dominant. Maybe look to finish. See what Maximus does a little bit different. Whitehead coming out with a big smile on his face. He's having fun here. Again, looking for that route one takedown. Just trying to reap the knee out. I mean, that body, he gets it. Once he's, it's the second time we've seen the body locked. It, and it's always tight. It's been tight both times. I think it's just a matter of time. Maximus is going to have to fight hard here. I mean, it's a tendency you can take back to the oldest of old school mixed martial arts. The fighter who can impose his will on his opponent is usually the fighter that wins. And that's exactly what we're seeing here. Absolutely. Whitehead wants to close the distance. He does so. He wants to take down. He'll get it. Just a matter of time. You've got to believe here. Unless Daniel Maximus can upset the apple cart. Yeah, he's working hard. He's keeping a wide base. He's really leaning those hips back into the cage, making it hard for Whitehead to get any purchase. But again, he reaps, it, reaps the legs. Outside tripping, down he goes. Beautiful stuff there from Whitehead. And again, you know, ends up in the half guard, and you know that he's going to look to pass as soon as the opportunity presents itself. Yeah, looking to step through already here. Just hooking his foot behind the knee of Maximus. He's going to look to pull yep. that right leg through in a moment's time. Yep. Steps into side control. Just needs to free the ankle here. Then he can go to knee on belly, into mount. Then he's got his options. He's got the arm bar. He's got the punches. And the Straight into mount. Beautiful stuff from Chris Whitehead. And that's going to be, that's the skill set that is the difference in this fight at the moment. It's as soon as Whitehead's been able to close that distance and get the lock, it's just been a matter of time. Now he's looking to posture up. Maybe crucifix that arm. Plenty of options here, and, that, and that's the key thing. He's got time to cook his man, grind him down, break his will, break his spirit, and, and the options to finish are, are almost endless from this point. There's chokes, there's arm bars. Of course, he's got the punches as well if he wants to sit back, get some leverage, and throw some heavy leather. Again, I, I, I'm really again. I'm really impressed with Whitehead's patience. He's not rushing anything. He oh oh, mounted over. triangle. Oh. It's coming, Paddy Pimlet style. He's got the mounted triangle. Here. He's, he's looking to pull his foot up, so his ankle is behind his own knee. He's got that option. He can switch for an armbar on the right hand side too. Daniel Maximus needs to be very careful here. And Maximus trying really hard to sneak out the back door, but is he going to give something up in the process? Yeah, mounted triangle coming. He's switching over. He's going to look to pull the head down here. Ten seconds to play with. Can he finish it? Awkward position here, but Maximus fighting tough through this and sees out the end of the second. Very impressive stuff there from Chris Whitehead. Mounted triangle, not something you see very often in mixed martial arts at any level, had his options to switch for the arm bar as well. Daniel Maximus really saved by the bell there, Steve. Absolutely, uh, and it, but didn't panic in those positions, worked hard and defended himself. I mean, credit as well. And we head into the third round, as indicated by our round identification technician. <laughs> Got to admit, I've never heard him call that before. That, that's brilliant. <laughs> that's, that's just brilliant. You should listen to Chelsea on this podcast more. I, I really should. One of those thankless jobs looks a lot easier than it is. I tell you, Brad, you try it. It's easy to walk in a semicircle. It's easy to lift a sign up. But you try doing both at the same time, Steve. Amen. And try looking like that, Brad, while you do it. Because I, I'm not sure the hot pants would suit you. I, I gave up looking like that a long time ago, in all fairness. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, and a nice deep straight to the face from Maximus starts this round out. Well, Maximus sending out his stall early. We knew this was going to be a battle. He's only going to win in the striking phase. Whitehead already closing the distance, already looking for that knee reap. Nice knee there up to the midsection from Maximus. Almost gives the takedown up himself as opposed to let him have it, but... And you've got to wonder, Steve, how much of that is mental at this point. He knows he's in the clinch. He knows he's going to struggle with that takedown defense. Really looked like he capitulated there more than it was Chris Whitehead affecting a, you know, a technically brilliant takedown, for example. 
Whitehead again now working from that half guard. Was looking to try and trap the arm. Now just waiting to get that position again. He's got a number of options here. There's a, a Kimura from this position. He's going to look to pull the leg through, I would imagine. Take that full mount. Maximus trying to shrimp his way out, looking to close the guard now, and he does. Very nice. You've got to wonder, though, if, if Chris Whitehead's not going to be bothered at all by this position. And he's certainly not going to be worried about the fight from this position because the first two rounds were, were clear. I, perhaps... And you hear Paddy Pimlet there saying, head down, watch his hips. Maximus trying to buck his way out, doesn't manage it. Whitehead in the half guard now, going to look to pull that leg through and step over. I mean, how, how, how frustrating must it be? I mean, it, it, Maximus trying everything to get some distance, get some space, but for the entire fight, Whitehead has just been sticky, sticky, sticky. Well, you know, there's not really much that Maximus can do better. You know, it, he, he's tried everything, unfortunately, it's just not working. There seems to be a bit of a gulf in technical ability between these two guys, certainly as far as the ground game's concerned, and that's why we're seeing Chris Whitehead use that Route 1 Jiu-Jitsu, closing the distance, taking it to the mat. That's where he's better. That's where his game works best. And slowly eking his way out of that close guard, almost into the half guard now, and you, you think it, it's just a matter of when he feels the position's available because it's a pretty open guard. And, you know, why not play the clock, get that cage time in? If you can, th th there's a huge, huge welt on Chris Whitehead's leg from maybe one or two leg kicks. You know, there's, there's no point standing with this guy. Take it into your realm. Do what you do. Do what you've trained for. Do what you've practiced. Do what you're best at. Right. Just continues to work and grind away for position. And again, into the mount. Maximus with a... A desperate attempt to buck up the hips with 10 seconds to go. And Final 10 seconds, he tried to switch for an armbar there. Looking for a big finish as Chris Whitehead oh, and switches the for the armbar. Oh, oh just in time. He heard that clapper, threw it all out there. That's exactly what we want to see from these guys, Steve. Absolutely, a rueful smile on the face of Danny Maximus there. I think, I think he realized on the ground that it was just different gravy, but... Fair play to this kid as well. He didn't give up. He was in bad positions. He fought through a few submission attempts. This is, you know, as they say, sorry, John, I'm stealing it from you. Win or learn, right? Absolutely. And, and, and you know, what a learning experience for Daniel Maximus. You know, he, he knows what he's going to do on Monday morning now. Take down defense. Drill, drilling that sprawl. Amen. Drilling that stand up from the ground. Getting his back on the cage. Getting back to his feet. Hey, and that's what the amateur division is all about. It's not about wins or losses. It's not about records. It's about getting that cage experience. Filling the holes that you've in your game. we go to the judges' scorecards. With a unanimous decision, your winner in the red corner, Chris Whitehead! And let's hear it for his opponent, let's hear it for Daniel Maximus! 